Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Radio Controlled Monday. So this week we're going to be looking at this Crone Lateral Swather. You also may know this as a rake or a windrower. We have used these many times before on Farming Simulator. So it's nice to see one as a model. And what we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to get it out of the box and we're going to give it a go. Um, but let's just open it up. It's a bit different to the normal ones because this one actually, the lid just comes off the top. Move that out of the way. And you can see, very nice, very nicely detailed. Move it forwards a bit. Um, yeah, this is a Crone Swadro 900. I think that's what it's called. Um, the documents are below, so we'll get that out in a minute. Now this little cable here is for attaching the implement, any implement, to the actual tractor and controlling it with the same remote control. Um, and there are also some spare parts as well included behind this insert. So what we'll do is we'll just remove this and in here we've got first of all the instructions very important and also back here these are two replacement parts which can very easily get broken on this model so I'll show you those in a minute or two just move some of these boxes out of the way first of all we need to remove it from the box and not like the other ones the other ones are just sort of laid in place these ones are actually tied in must keep it safer in there now, if you're wondering how much this cost or where to get it from, I think it was in the re I've had it for a while. I think it was in the region of fifty pounds, so not too expensive really. And I bought this one from Amazon.co.uk, I think. Now this tie goes round each side of it, so we just need to pull it through. It's held in place very well. Right, we're getting there. I want to be quite careful with it. It's a delicate thing. Here it is, out of the box. There is just a little insert in here which protects the middle part. Have to very carefully feed it out of there. And yeah, you see these bits of plastic around the outside, the guards? Um, that is what you get a replacement for because obviously they're very fragile, very thin plastic. Uh, so you get these. Uh, two extra parts for if you break them off. So it's nice to see that you get some spare parts with it. We're now going to attach it. And it actually turns out that this doesn't have a battery. It runs off the tractor's battery. Which is obviously a very good idea. And it saves a lot of money as well because you have to buy a charger. So that is now attached. Now we just need to put the, the lead which goes from the tractor to the implement that just clips in and then the tractor resets it just has to reconnect with the controller there it goes so what I've done is I've trailed the lead through this little holder which I think it's that's what it's there for um, this obviously keeps you from trailing and dragging across the ground which is much better very well designed uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the implement using the tractor's remote and I'll show you how to do that. Basically, it is just this one control here. This actually goes around 360 degrees, and you can control tipper trailers, any implement, in fact, I think, off this uh, control here. Uh, now, actually, one thing which is very clever about this windrower is it doesn't actually power the rake. I'm not actually sure what they're called, but you know the, the rake part of it. When you're driving along with it on the ground, these wheels actually drive it. So this is not only prolonging the battery life of the implement, but also it's another thing which won't break in the future because obviously it doesn't have a motor. So what I'm going to do is lower it down, do a bit of demonstrating here. It is unfortunate I don't have more space to do this, but you can see it working. Obviously it would be much better on a hard floor or even in a model, model scenery with a, a grass field. What I'll probably do at the end is I will do it on, an, on the desk and then there is more space to drive it and it will give you a better demonstration. But that gives you an idea, let's follow it up again. And it's really easy to transport. One thing I should probably show you as well, 
is at the back of the implement there are also lights and it has indicators, hazard lights and also the headlights or rear lights as it would be, the tail lights so if I just drive the tractor into here you can see on the back that is the right indicator that is the hazards and that is the left indicator so not only does the tractor power the implement it also powers the lights on the back of it as well and yeah I think it's fantastic that you don't actually need to have another battery to run these things the next thing is the manual it actually shows you the life size implement size this is in meters and it also shows you the model size this is obviously in millimeters so much smaller um, and it also shows you the weight of the model it doesn't tell you the weight of the the full size one unfortunately but this one is 200 grams um, and it says uh, power supply solely via the tractor data cable which is I should have read that first but I thought uh, initially that it was actually powered by its own battery but turns out it's not so that's really good news so finally as we've got more space I'm going to show you on the top of the table still not the ideal place to do it the best place to do it would be on carpet because then there's more friction for the drive wheels to run on because you'll see that some of them aren't moving too fast but overall pretty good I'm amazed that they actually spin as well as that without any motor at all powering them literally just driven off the wheels so all in all I think this is actually a really good model this is my so far my favorite implement that I've used you might be thinking well this is the only one I've used but I've actually had two tipping trailers in the past this is by far the most interesting but they're all very good just a shame I don't have more space but there we go the crone lateral swather from Siku Control Next time, we'll be taking a look at this Manlo loader, which is a very expensive model, but I think it's going to be well worth it. But until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.